One of the similarity conditions is called angle-angle. And what we need to do here is investigate matching pairs of angles between the two triangles. Just having a quick scan through there, we've got two angles in both triangles, but they don't necessarily match. So what we need to do is consider all the angles before we get started. We'll notice here that clearly 65 degrees is matching in both triangles. That occurs at angle ACB and angle EGF. But the other angles don't match. So what we need to do is a calculation to find one of the missing angles. We'll find the angle at FEG, and we can do that by knowing that there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So we subtract the other two angles to find the missing angle, which is 56 degrees. That means that angle BAC and angle FEG match. And we can summarize all of that by stating our two pairs of matching angles, and then stating the similarity condition between the two triangles, which is angle-angle. The squiggly line which appears between triangle ABC and triangle EFG refers to similarity between the two triangles. And to the right hand side of those two triangles we write the condition which is angle angle. There's no need to state it as angle angle angle, in other words three pairs of angles, because in any triangles if two pairs of angles match, the third pair must match because the two angles together with the third one must add up to 180 degrees. So the third one will always be the same. There's no need to state it because it must add up to 180 degrees in both triangles. This similarity condition that we're looking at is called side, side, side. And the basis of it is by saying that every side on one triangle has been increased or decreased by the same factor to get to the next triangle. For consistency, what we'll do is we'll look at the large sides divided by the small sides. And we'll start by looking at the longest side on both triangles. 12 on the large triangle divided by 8 on the small triangle gives us a ratio of 3 over 2, or a result of 1.5. The next longest side on both triangles are the 9 and 6. 9 on the large triangle divided by 6 on the small gives us a ratio of 3 over 2. Repeating that process for the remaining sides, we see that 6 divided by 4 also gives us a ratio of 3 over 2. So all of the ratios are the same. And we can summarize this by listing every pair of sides and seeing the final ratio, which is 3 over 2. And that suggests to us that the two triangles are similar and the similarity condition is side, side, side. The similarity condition that we're looking at here is called side angle side. And the important thing to remember as shown in the title is that the angle must be between the pairs of sides that we're looking at. So we need to identify the pairs of sides and the angle between those sides. And in this case, 71 is clearly between the six meters and three meters. So we can see an angle there of 71 degrees. In the other triangle, we need to determine the missing angle, and we do that by subtracting 61 and 48 from 180 degrees, and we do get 71 degrees, so the angles do match. So that's the first part of the condition for side angle side. Now what we need to do is compare pairs of sides. First thing we do is look for the large side on the large triangle, and then we'll have to find the corresponding large side on the smaller triangle and we put them in a ratio. So 6 divided by 3 equals 2. We'll now see if the ratio is the same for the other pair of matching sides. So in the larger triangle, 3 matches 1.5 meters on the smaller triangle. So again, we do large divided by small, and we get 3 divided by 1.5 is 2. Summarizing all that information, we can see that we have a matching angle between the pairs of sides. And on the large triangle, divided by the sides on the small triangle, we can see that the matching sides have a ratio of 2 to 1. So the two triangles are similar, and we state that in the final line of our working, and the condition for the similarity is side angle side. Here we're looking at the similarity condition called right hypotenuse side, and as the title suggests, we're looking for a right angle, the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, and one of the other sides to compare them to see if they're similar. 
First of all, what we'll do is we'll identify with these two triangles that we've got in front of us, they both share a right angle. We can see here one's at angle STU and one's at angle DEF. We can also see that the hypotenuse, if we compare large to small, in other words, divide the large side by the matching hypotenuse of the smaller triangle, we've got eight divided by four is two. So the sides are in the ratio of two to one. We'll compare the other sides to see if that ratio is the same. So the larger triangle over the smaller triangle is the match again that we make so we're consistent, and six divided by three is two. So to summarize that information, we write that down in a list where we compare our two right angles. We then write down the ratio of two matching sides. In the first instance, we compare the hypotenuse of the large triangle over the hypotenuse of the small. And then we find another pair of sides that match and we compare large over small. Both pairs of sides are in the same ratio. So we can summarize by saying the two triangles are similar and we use the squiggly line notation there to represent similar triangles. And the similarity condition is right hypotenuse side.